To a new episode of Wins Notes. It's episode number 20 in like three years. But anyway, we're still doing it. This is basically like the relaunch. If you didn't catch the last episode, 19, where I just kind of call you up on what happened in the last year with myself and all this, this stuff that's going on. But more pertinent, more importantly, this podcast. Uh, if you've been here before, welcome back. If you haven't, hope you enjoy yourself. You hear something you like. You know, the usual, you know, just have somebody chatting in your ear about a topic you are relatively interested in, let's say that, while, you know, you do the mundane daily things like your commute or dishes or laundry or whatever you do when you listen to podcasts and you have this wonderful voice. Um, Not my words, but others. Um, There's always the comment section. Let me know. Anyway, I don't know where I'm getting going with this. Uh, But yeah, so... This month in, well, in the UK, is Black History Month um, in the States. It's February, um, but, you know, as this audience is worldwide, <laughs> as far as the stats tell me, yeah, you know, cover different things at different times of the world. But it's still evergreen, you know. It's always something that uh, is kind of on, not like the forefront of people's minds, but just like, it's a thing, and it's very much been a thing for, like, me and my life and things like that. Because I don't know if you know this, sarcasm aside, I've been black for quite a long time. And that informs a lot of the way I am, which is well, kind of what I'm going to talk about in this uh, episode. Because about a month ago, and then it just came out recently, um, I was asked to answer a couple questions for uh, UKF. Basically, like, my thoughts of the drum and bass scene and things it can do to, you know, promote diversity and things like that, which that's not saying that drum and bass isn't diverse. It always has been like, we know, we know this, the problem is, and what happens in all kinds of, um, whether it's genres, culture scenes, um, cities, you know, people forget the kind of thing. Like, not that it's taken for granted, but it's like you you shy away from these topics that sometimes make you go, eh, and like you don't want to talk about, you know, because it makes you uncomfortable. But like it's these kinds of conversations that, you know, help with understanding maybe a point of view that isn't yours. And I imagine me being me and you being you, I have a point of view that is similar, but different. And that's all that's all we're gonna gonna talk about because, you know, we're all different. We're all unique in our own way, the same, but you know, slightly, a little bit, a little bit of something, a little bit of that. You know what I mean? And that is what makes like, like what we do and what we create and things like that, just that more um, rich. You know, sure, drum and bass is like all breaks, and you know, it's bass, and it's like it's. It's this and it's it's dark, it's underground, but it's also commercial, it's also this. And like, but the thing is, it's made by people. And all those people are different peoples. <laughs> all those people are different in their own ways. So like me being American is different from maybe you being Londoner, you know, who's experienced drum and bass in a completely different way that I have. And let's say you produce music. You're gonna make music that sounds completely different based on your experiences whether directly drum and bass related or just, you know, being alive for as long as you've been alive and experiencing what you've experienced. Same for me. And it's those experiences that, you know, inform what's being created, what's being passed around musically, what's being shown. And, like, it's what makes this culture that we love, drum and bass, the music, the shows, the parties, the everything around it, it's what makes it what it is. You know, it's like one of the biggest kind of like, let's call it melting pot genres and cultures and scenes that there is 
you know? Like, yeah, not to, I'm kind of rambling at this point. But for those of you who haven't seen the article, I'll link it in the description of this. But oh, it's a quick one. It's uh, me and Degs with this one. You know, I've talked to him a ton. He has a completely, he has a really similar experience, but him being black in the UK, me being black in America, and being introduced to this culture in completely different ways. And, you know, the things that kind of happen, the, let's say, interesting but not so positive interactions we've had with people, he gets a lot as well. I don't, eh, not yet. <laughs> I've, I've had my moments, you know. YouTube comments aren't always as positive as they are, but we uh, we we persist. But anyway, the article. I read it real quick. The drum and bass scene can celebrate. Bra- ah, huh, I'm already messing this up. The drum and bass scene can celebrate Black History Month with heightened visibility to reach those who aren't aware of the roots of this sound and culture. Representation matters more than ever, especially when introducing the sound and culture to the casual casual passerby. It's easier to feel like you belong when you see someone who looks like you coming from where you came from, doing the thing you want to do. We should be upfront. Brands and labels to champion artists and the unique pieces they bring to this culture. Don't rely on the often bemoaned do your research when it comes to history and instead present the facts as they are, past, present, and the future. The more welcoming and understanding we are, the more this culture can flourish. We should embrace everyone's differences, not just on a musical level, but a human level. We all have our own stories and unique look at the world around us, and that informs everything we put into this culture. The music, the media, the raves, drum and bass or not, we're all people, and the people are what make this culture what it is. Seek to understand and involve people who come from different backgrounds than you, who look different, who speak different, who are different. Be inclusive not exclusive. Dubs are exclusive. The rave should be inclusive. Drum and bass is built on the outside influences brought in by the people who engage with and create it. It is very much a melting pot sound, and there's something for everyone in it. There's hip-hop, soul, R&B, metal, jazz, blues, folk, orchestral, classical, you name it, and you can find it with a drum and bass. And if you aren't hearing what you want, there's space to create it. I sound all right sometimes when I have time to write things out instead of, you know, <laughs> ramble them, freestyle them. But I imagine you get you kind of get the picture I'm painting, at least from my point of view, and I've talked about it loads. Like, there's more to this than just the music. There always has been. That's always what I've kind of been talking about on, like, YouTube channel and within this podcast. And, like, the cut the interviews I've done is just try to see the person – behind it because the people are what make this what it is you know and and trying to ignore you know what makes us all different is just kind of silly you know it's it makes it one dimensional you know it really doesn't show all there is to be had like for all the music and stuff I've put out for all the people I've met and talked to for all the shows I've played like the music is very like secondary like the best part about going to play shows is meeting the people at the shows, for me at least. It's meeting the other artists that I don't really get to see unless we're like hanging out backstage for like an event or something. And then usually if I talk to them, it's over the internet, something like that. Especially with me being geographically separate from, you know, the main scene of London and all of in Bristol and the UK basically. And like me being here in the States, being massively spread out the U.S., like, I'm away from everyone. Like, the people who like drum and bass and I can actually talk to in, a like, a thorough kind of way, what's going on, like, with for my experience and for, like, how much I'm into it kind of thing, very way past service levels, like, there's maybe four people. They could fit in this room, you know? Like, so the way I look at things is very much as an outsider – who is within, you know, because I'm just very far removed from the things that are considered normal and regular and whatever just, like, happens, you know, in the... Where am I going with this? Like, yeah. And, like, saying, like I'm just far away. Like, the, my introduction to drum and bass wasn't like, oh, my parents had records, things like that. And, and I just kind of stumbled upon them and was like, oh, who's this? Or I went 
was walking down the road and like happened to hear like walk by fabric and hear something going on at the day party or like you know people who are like they live there in that area and like you grow up just knowing these things inherently even if you don't know what it is like i was introduced to drum and bass from video games and stuff and the internet and like the boom of like ukf in the 2010s and like all of that like i didn't go to like my first just like drum and bass event until I was already like well into making the music and releasing stuff, you know, simply just because I wasn't around when it was happening. And then like another thing is like age plays a factor over here and like you got to be 21 and like things like that. And like, yeah, it's all this kind of stuff. But that everything that's kind of happened to me, it's just as a person, as a human, is what informs the way I create and the things I like to talk about here. So to like dash all of that aside and just be like, oh, it's just about the music. Like who cares about that person? You know, I get it from to a point, but like also like you really kind of uh, dismissing the very thing that goes into the, the very person that creates the thing you like. And for everything you like about that person's music, you're like, oh, I don't worry about the details. Just give me, give me the, the thing. I don't want to know how it's made. And like, yeah, fair. But also like, eh, you know, just never, it's never sat with me the right way. <clears throat> the main point that I want to kind of discuss in this episode is why representation matters. And I've been like juggling this topic for a while like the first time i wrote it down to like say anything kind of on it was like 2020 2021 kind of the covid era the blm era the lots of you know social kind of changes and the, the stuff hasn't stopped it's it's always around but i never knew kind of what or how to say it. or maybe i was just i don't know, not afraid but just like apprehensive like am i going too far kind of how i always feel about like these kind of heady topics mostly because like it's music like it should be fun and light but like things happen around that music that like it kind of detracts you know like when someone comes to me and is like how did you like I've been met with all these people who have treated me a certain way even though the music's fine like the people around the music are making me are taking me out of that love because they treat me a certain way because of the way I am or the way I present or the things like that. And like, I hate that because I know that feeling. I have been grown up, always been looked at as the odd one out or different or weird, things like that. And me just looking to feel some sort of validation, like what I'm doing isn't weird or wrong because I'm, I've like in my, um, let's call it, research or just looking around like I'm looking for someone who's doing the thing that I want to do successfully and looks like me or came from somewhere like me you know it could be as simple as like oh you're black I'm black that means something already it really does like but it's like oh you're doing this thing this thing I want to do and like you're getting along all right you're being you're accepted or you've had you've had your like trials and tribulations but you've you know you found your your pocket Sick. That means I can probably do that. You know, oh, you came from St. Louis just like me. Like geographically, you came from where I came from. That means you probably went to like, had like a similar upbringing, similar economic kind of like status, similar family dynamic. And you're doing the thing you got out of that. Okay, sick. It's stuff like that. That's why representation matters. And to even paint a more, let's say, a vivid picture, let me. Tell your story, an actual story, not just me rambling, but here we go. And follow me here. It'll it'll go somewhere. <clears throat> For most of my life, especially younger years of just growing up, I have always been different. I've always done the thing that I've been told multiple times isn't black. And mind you, contextually, I'm growing up in Midwest America, St. Louis, Missouri, North County, Florissant. All that makes a difference. And if you're 
even if like you get it from St. Louis and why I'm like, what high school did you go to? You already like, you're the mindset. You know what I'm saying? All right. All these things give you kind of a uh, detail of where I'm growing up, how I'm growing up. Okay. I've always been into things that are different and not considered black or what black people do. I've been told constantly that like, oh, the instrument, you play the viola, you're an orchestra, black people don't do that. I never see them. Not that they don't, but like the, the, the general consensus is this, this is not a black thing to do. You're an orchestra, black people play in band. They, <laughs> you know, play the trumpet, tra- play the trombone, play something cool, play jazz. Another edge of, oh, you play this girly instrument, the violin, the viola, like men play this big brass instrument, men play the drums. It's another thing. All right. I grew up skateboarding as a teenager. So 12, basically middle school, 12, 13, 14, and up, and still. And when I was starting out, skateboarding wasn't black. It wasn't cool to be black. It wasn't be cool to be black in skateboarding to the black community. Not like everyone around. Yeah, mind you, context is these comments are from fellow black people. Fellow, like, I'm saying black because black American is kind of a thing like, I'm not I'm not from Africa. I didn't come here. My parents, their parents, their parents, their parents. Like, we're very far removed. I don't know what it means to be African and then come over and be American, just black American. And there's whole identity that comes with that. You know, if you're American, you understand what I'm saying. Like, you just do. And even if not, like, there's still that kind of, like, connotation of, you know, where are you from? Who are you? Your heritage, your where you came from kind of thing, which was removed because, you know, history and all that. But all these comments from family, from friends, from just people who are around and see me doing the thing I'm doing, whether it's skateboarding, not black. I've been just like like just rolling down the street minding my business, have people like yell like obscene shit at me. Just because of like I'm riding a skateboard. Black people don't do that. Or you're playing a viola, huh? You must be like especially like just, you know, older black communities, like, oh, you do this thing that's kind of girly, you must basically they're trying to call you gay and things like that. Like just out of fear and insecurity and not knowing anything and feeling like, you know, Oh, this person doing that thing that I wouldn't do. And I, I'm, you know, human stuff. Silly, silliness. Um, so school, like, I've, like people you care about are telling you these things. So you constantly grow up questioning, like, something wrong with me. Am I doing the right thing? Am I like, am I not real because I like these other things? Not that I'm like forcing myself to be different or like I just gravitate to these things. Like with skateboarding came all the music you hear in skate videos, which everyone knows. Like skating is very eclectic. Like it's another big melting pot thing. No one skates the same. No one looks the same. No one dresses the same. You know, it's it's his own culture. It's like, you know, like skateboarding isn't like a sport. It's it's a lifestyle. It's a it's a way of like processing like your every day, but just like through the lens of skateboarding and hanging out friends and stuff like that. And like that was a ma- massive part of my life, which I was constantly questioning because everyone was telling me it was the wrong thing to do, you know? And then my musical taste changed because of skateboarding, because of being introduced um, to other music as a musician and how intensely I was kind of playing and performing as like a teenager and stuff like that. And even like, I didn't even want to blend the two because like, oh, you play the viola? Like, how are you doing that and skateboarding? Like you aren't, like that's not cool. Oh, you skateboard? Like you didn't, you shouldn't, oh, you play, how are you skateboarding when you're supposed to be at rehearsal, you know, and playing all this stuff? Like if you hurt yourself and then you can't play anymore. And then it's like not seeing how the two are very combined for me and kind of give me the same kind of feeling like the way I feel expressing myself through just riding around skating is a similar feeling of making music and making these kind of things. But it was only until I started to see 
other, basically other black men, black people doing skating, playing orchestral instruments and excelling and being like praised for what they're doing and accepted, did I start to feel accepted for who I was, you know? I Like around that time, like skateboarding wise, like Baker 3, okay? Like you already know what I'm, like if you're within skating for that time period, like you know what I'm saying? Like that was a, like it's still kind of one of, arguably one of like the best videos of just like showing skating like ever. Like it's everyone's like top five, right? Kind of, even like no matter what era you kind of grew up in. But it was scared as like Terry Kennedy, who came around. Um, and we were like, oh yeah, he get, he became, he hung out with like Andrew Reynolds and all these people. And like he became pro after six months. I'll do that. And like, you know, other kind of stuff. But it was like just seeing somebody, or Antoine Dixon, or Theotis Beasley, or even outside of like Baker, you had like, um, uh, like Ray Barbie, classic. Um, skater, like who I like look up to as kind because of, he had kind of the same story of like being different, skating up, growing up early eight, 80s, 90s, you know, in California and like l- liking the music and making the music he did and being a photographer. And I connect with him on like those things of like, like why I like photography is because of skating and why I like, you know, video making is because of skating and like so much of my life is because of skateboarding and, like, finding acceptance in something that I didn't feel accepted in until I saw other people who looked like me, who came from a place like me, who sounded like me, who had an experience like me, doing the thing that I wanted to do and being successful at it in their own way. That's why representation, like, matters, okay? It wasn't, like, fast forward, drum and bass. I Like, of course, it's a multicultural genre, Multicultural genre, sure. It's pretty obvious that it it's like it's not obvious now. Kind of like if I was starting out and basically when I was starting out as well, like that drum and bass is black music. Like I know that now. I didn't start off knowing that because what I saw on the internet wasn't people who looked like me. Okay. It wasn't people who were making the music. Like I love the music, but like you can really connect when he's like, oh. Someone, like, he looks like, ah, you know, they look similar. Like, if someone dresses as similar as you, you, you start to, like, oh, maybe I could, like, know that person, be friends with them, or something like that. Like, if you're at school and someone, like, wears similar shoes that you wear, you're like, oh, okay, what's up? You know, you want to talk to them just because that little thing in common. Or if, like, if you're a musician and you're in a room full of people you don't know and you hear so-and-so plays the piano, you're like, oh, you did? Like, how was your, you know, you immediately have that thing to connect on. Okay. When like I was getting into drum and bass, I didn't see any any of that. I didn't. I just saw kind of what was popular, the big dance floor stuff. The big it just reminded me of the EDM kind of game that I just got of got out of a little bit. But then, me being me, I started to look a little further, go a little deeper. All right. Try and find things I connect with. Like I tell a story all the time, like I didn't get caliber to begin with. You know, and now he's my favorite because I understand kind of what he's doing and what he's achieving. Like sound wise, I connect to it because it's live instruments, it's jazz, it's low key. You know, that's something I grew up knowing. It's not a direct, you know, link, but there's enough there for me to like really connect with this person. And the more I get to know him as like, I don't personally know him, but just like through interviews and stuff and how he's like very, you know, keeps to himself. He's an artist. He's a painter. I love photography. That photography, that's my visual art. It's something else. It's like he's just of like a full creative. And I connect with that because that's how I've always felt. You know? And he exists kind of in his own pocket, his own realm within drum and bass. Cause like I said earlier, like if there isn't like there's room for all of it within drum and bass. That's like what's keeps me going like you can have the musical you can have the dirty you can have the straightforward and kind of cookie cutter paint by numbers i'm not complaining about anyone specific but you know what i'm saying like you can have that you can have the deep the the heady the introspective you know this range but i didn't know that getting in getting into it you know it wasn't until seeing like john from galaxy it's like oh there's a black guy making drum and bass who's also like around my age 
also personality wise kind of like goofy, you know, just like fun to be around. And then I've met him and he is, you know, I didn't really connect until I saw. And of course, like there's older like guys like Goldie and Digital and, you know, Fabio and Groove Rider and GQ. But it's like I connect with on one level, you know, black people in drum and bass. I got you. But now there's a deeper level of like, all right, they're kind of my like parents' age. Like no disrespect. But it's like you can't really connect on that same way. They came up differently. Similar but differently. But then you have people my age, you know, Dex, um, John Galaxy, uh, Liam into um guys over here like uh Shibumi, Echo Brown, you know, we've because of our age and the way we see the world at the age and like generation we are, we connect on that, you know? It wasn't until I saw someone doing the thing I wanted to do, coming coming from a place similar to me, background. Um, what did I say earlier? I had I rattled off the whole thing, but you get what I'm saying. Like I saw something that I connected with, someone that I connected with, on a deeper, more human level. And that gave me just enough of the validation to be like, all right, I can do this too. All right, if there's space for them, there's space for me. I just need to focus on my craft kind of thing. And that's what I've done since, you know, and that's why I'm here trying to say and do the same for people who are trying to get into the scene. And it's not just like black people or like, someone with the same kind of person of color, skin type, skin color as me, you know? It's about showing someone who doesn't feel welcome that they are welcome and can be accepted into this thing that doesn't seem like you can. And it's a feel, it's only a feeling like, like if you've had the feeling, you know what I'm talking about. But like, if there's a lot of like, you don't you don't know what it is if you've never experienced it. And like I've grown up my entire life experiencing this. I experience it now, like as a teacher, and just kind of until people get to know you, it's like, who is this guy like in this school around these kids? It's still like that. Like even for me, with my personality, like and the moment I start talking, kind of being goofy, or you see me around my students and stuff, it's like, oh, okay, we get it. He's like a teacher. He's like, this is his thing, you know? Like, he's, sucks to say, but like, he's one of the good ones. You know, I've heard that so many times, you know? And it's kind of ridiculous that we have to go through that. Of And it's not we... It's we as in the sense of we have to go through that as someone who is not seen as the norm within a certain thing. All right. It's because like is even though like I'm just keeping this focus as like me and my experience and like it's Black History Month in the UK and all of that. And this probably be circled back circling back around like February when it is in the US. But it's like it's just feeling like outside, like whether you're like black or a person of color. And something that feels dominated by, you know, someone who is white kind of thing, you know. Orchestra, primarily white, okay? And, like, secondary, it's kind of like, um, ooh, what am I, what am I, like, Eastern Asian, like China, J- um, Japan, things like that. And the whole stereotypes that go with that. And, like, Why? Why does it have to be that? Like, it doesn't have to be that way. So then you have, like, organizations like the Black Orchestral Network and stuff who try and champion these um, artists, um, artists and musicians, um, persons of color, who are, not infiltrating is the word, but getting through those blocks, getting past the gatekeepers and showing, and also trying to raise awareness that, hey, you can do this thing and look like this and come from where we came from and still excel in this, you know, field. Because we've all kind of grown up being told, oh, you do this. That's not black. Black people don't do that. Like, And that's very much an American thing. Like when I say that, it is American. And these comments are coming from the black community, which is always like just a circle of like 
re- repeating. You know, like the older generations, like, oh, you couldn't do this, but you know, because like you don't want to seem white, or you want to seem this, because there's a whole thing that goes with that, like society wise, of like, like think about like black women in business scenarios, um, like corporate scenarios, who have to like the microaggressions of hey, you should all oh, your hair is natural and curly, like you gotta straighten it. You gotta present this way. You have to look um white effacing and things like that. Like because anything else you seem, you know, threatening, different. It's not accepted, you know? And people like to not protect what they're in out of like, you know, to make it better. But it's like to keep you down in a sense of like exclusivity to feel better about themselves. You know, I did not have a great introduction to the junglist, to the drum and bass crowd in the beginning. Like, how many stories do, like, and not even, like, drum bass, like, everything, where you you can find, like, the gatekeeper, you know, the, oh, you need to do this and do that and earn your stripes and, like, this kind of stuff. But it's not in, like, a, in a, in like, a, like a genuine kind of prove yourself, kind of we want you, if you're going to be around, like prove it kind of thing. It's just like, nah, you get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Like one of the first gigs I ever played before drum and bass or anything, I had a introduction with one of the heads, you know, only vinyl, doesn't talk to anybody, just brings in his case of records. He's a legend in the scene of St. Louis, which there's no like, come on, like what are you, what are you doing? But, you know, the ego came through, the human tried to look more important than the thing he was doing, which was just playing music that he liked. But no, he was it was more important that like he looked a certain way. And he basically like mugged us off as we were like playing house and like some other stuff and we were young and that kind of thing. Came in, like made some other like guys who I was with, like friends, like move their sets and like I'm playing and he just played some jungle and stuff and like that was cool. Like I liked the music, but like his attitude made me look at it completely different. Like, oh, these are the kind of people who are here. I don't want to do anything with them. And now I see the same people, you know? And I'm not just talking about your normal, like, comment section or Facebook group, like, you know, your old head D&B boomers. You know, I'm talking about people who actually have the power to make change and out of fear and maintaining whatever little position they think they have. They try and keep you down. That's happened. I've watched it happen to other people, like friends, like have their career or their like, trajectory stifled because of something that had nothing to do with what they were creating, you know, and it was all about this person's fear and like semblance of status, you know? And like, there's just like, why do, why do we need that? You know? So we seek out these kind of, we seek out people who look like us, who gone through it because like hopefully when we meet that person and they've gone through a similar um, like up like comeuppance or upbringing or whatever, they won't repeat the same thing. And a lot of times they don't because they get it, you know, like when I talked to, (laughs) here you go. Like when I was talking to Degs, like in the beginning and meeting him and he was like, he had been part of the industry, you know, for a couple of years at that point. And like he got, Like, you know, Pavilia was a thing and, like, his life changed, you know? But even with that came a lot more attention and a lot more comments and stuff in his, like, DMs from just, like, the most hateful people who were just attacking him out of fear, you know, that same fear that's, like, perpetuated about, oh, there's someone doing something different and they're getting all the spotlight. It's like, oh, it's just because they're different. They look like this. That's why they get it. It's like, no, like, my man's grafted for years and, like... He's good at what he does, you know, but people want to, like, belittle you for the sake of, like, keeping their own, like, fragile identity safe in a way. And, like, that's so, I don't know, it's just it's human, but it's stupid, you know? But, like, we could connect, me and him, like, immediately just by <laughs> being black and in this business, even though, like, I come from the States, he in um, London, Horsham, and everything he like he has experienced. And we have all these parallels. And also these parallels as being musicians and trying to get somewhere 
and like meeting these people who treat you a certain way. And then, you know, it'd be your own people who try and like send you down, you know, and try to take you down and things like that and like infighting and stuff. And it's like, why does it have to be that way? Like a music, a culture that prides itself on like positivity and understanding and the look of diversity because of the history, not of the current state, but the history of being diverse is like, yeah, remember we used to do like, yeah, of course it's black. Yeah, it's like, but like, what about now? Like, what do you feel now? Like, who are you seeing being pushed now? And not because they're black, but because they're good and happen to be black, you know? Like, that's the thing. Like, you don't want to be, like, Kobe doesn't want to be, didn't want to be, like, the best black basketball player. You want to be the best basketball player, you know? I don't want to be the best black drum and bass artist. <laughs> I want to be the best drum and bass artist I can be. Like, I'm not going to be, like, there's no ranking. It's art. But, you know, internet does what the internet does. But, you know, you want to be seen and understood for who you are and not the characteristics. Even though the characteristics come into play, you know, you just want to be understood. That's why representation matters. It's because you want to see somebody who looks like you doing the thing you want to do, coming from where you came from and how you came up, being successful. Okay? Whether you're black, person of color, from the States, a certain age range, you know. Um, yeah, you just want to be seen and understood and be accepted for who you are, you know. And the way that we can help others outside getting into this genre feel that way is by showing off currently how things are and the people who are exi who exist, the people, not the music. Like the music is, is cool, but it's secondary because it's the people who keep that music going. It's people who run the labels. It's people who book the shows and promote the shows. It's people who run back of house. It's people who run front of house. It's, you know, like it's it's a people business. It's a people culture. All the music should speak for itself. Blah blah blah. It's like, nah. That's the that's basically it's almost as bad as being like I said I don't see color. You know, it's like you do. And when you don't acknowledge that, like you're discounting a person's existence, the very reason they are there, the very way they became to stand in front of you. And do the thing they're doing. Like, you're denying all of that so you can, you know, have a bit of escapism for three and a half minutes conveniently through your, like, Spotify subscription. Or your, you know, you can catch a quick video for a drop, but you won't, like, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's, it's silly. It sucks that we have to, like, go through that. But, like, it can't be ignored. Like, the reason things are still going is because of people. You know, like everyone, like that's why I kind of hate when like we're like, instead of referring to like a person that does things, they want to refer to the thing they're associated with. Kind of like hospital does this, this guy, this label does this. It's like no, nah, it's it's a person. Let's run that, and of course, like you know, it's a little bit more than that. Like, yeah, the organization is represented by the people, so effectively, the organization is doing this as long as they employ that person, kind of thing. But, like. It's it's the remove it's like the trying to remove the human element so you can just enjoy, you know, the the product. You don't want to you don't want to know how McDonald's nuggets are made. You just want to eat them when you're like blasted it after a raid, right? But there's still the whole story behind it, you know. And in that case, like it's not the best analogy, you know. But the point is, you can't ignore everything. You can't just be surface level. What's in front of me about stuff. Okay. I don't know. I got like I, I'm I'm ending, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, yeah, it was a bit rambly. But are you are you starting to understand what I'm saying? Like, like the big reason I do is just like love the music. Of course, that's why I make the music. I wouldn't do it if I didn't. But the big reason I like talk about these things, like throughout videos, and try and like get you the listener to understand, you know is because it makes 
such a huge difference. Just feeling like you're accepted within the realm of what you're trying to do. Like you're a musician, you want to be accepted as a musician. You're a DJ, you want to be accepted. You you do this, you're creative, you're an artist, you want to be accepted. It's like, oh, you shouldn't care what other people think. It's just about you. It's about the art. It's altruistic. It's like, no, we're human. We want that outside validation. We want to, we want to be understood. We want to be heard. We want to be known. We want to feel like we matter. That is why, like, drum and bass, as a culture, as a whole, the people within it just need to champion the people, you know? Like the music's like we know the music's good. Let's talk about the person, you know, behind the music. Let's talk about the person who put in the metadata for it to show up on Spotify correctly. Let's talk about the person who's put on the parties out of their own like just like day job money, like their own person, like no backing and is just trying to throw parties cook for the love of it and connect people in their city and their town around the world, you know? When someone, like, in their personal life has, like, you know, something come up, just reach out to them as a person, you know? Don't shy away. If, like, <laughs> like why should it matter if they're this? Why should it matter if they're there? So why should it, like, it matters because that's the reason they're here in front of you. The reason you know about this person is because of the life they lived until they became the person in front of your screen, you know? You don't get to discount all of that. Because you want to escape and like feel, you know, a kick drum, you know? You'll get to discount who that person is because it's convenient. Like if you've never felt like these kind of things, like this through like the story I'm saying, like, then like you just you don't know. You don't it's not it's not your problem. It's nothing to be like, oh, I don't get it, so it doesn't exist. Don't do that, you know? Like, that's just not how being a decent human being works. And it's decent human beings, as well as some not so decent human beings that keep this like the world running in our world of drum and bass running. Not specifically world of drum and bass, that's, that's a different thing. But like, <laughs> even a joke in the middle of this serious topic, Duncan, come on. But that's why, like, if drum and bass, the scene as a whole could do anything to keep itself going and to really flourish and invite people who are on the edge, on like the, oh, this looks cool, but like, I don't know about the people or I don't know about this. Like, introduce them. You know, be welcome with open arms that you are accepted. The thing I loved about skateboarding, it didn't matter, like, if you were black, white, this or that, gay, straight. It like, you just, you skated, we were cool immediately. And then we got to know the person because we hung out with you. We saw you at the skate park every day. If I, I had an extra bottle of water, I gave it to you because I know, like, you know, when I don't have it, you'll have it. Like, how many of my friends, do, like, I talk to now that I met at the skate park, and we only really met because, or, like, we connected because of skateboarding, but we also really connected because, like, one of us had snacks consistently. That was me. <laughs> or like a bottle of water because I didn't have any money because like we know how we came up. Like allowance wasn't a thing. So it's like if one of us had something, we'd share with the rest. You know, we connected on a human level after just connecting on the one thing we kind of liked and we knew no one else did. And drum and bass is like that to where like if you like it, you love it, you know. And it's hard to kind of convince other people like what you like about it, because it's never like really a specific thing. But it's just like the way you feel when you're accepted within it is what brings out that love. And the music is, yeah, the music attracted you, but like it was the friends we made along the way. You know what I mean? And like that's that's what keeps me going. Like that's why I still make stuff. That's why I love going out and doing shows and touring when I can. And like Spending a lot of my own money I make during the year on, like, housing myself and stuff in, like, London for a month and things like that because of the connections with the people I've made. And the more we include people instead of exclude them, but be inclusive instead of exclusive, is what will keep this going. Because, as a wise man once said, <laughs> dubs are exclusive. The rave is inclusive. 
Everybody. It's for everybody. Everyone should feel welcome. No one should show up to a party and feel like they don't belong. Just like no kid shows up to my classroom and feels like they don't belong. Okay? Same thing. Like, once you feel like you belong, that's where the magic happens. That's where the growth happens. My students won't learn a thing from me if they don't feel like I care about them. And I don't care about any parties or something if I don't feel like I'm, if I belong. I won't send my music to a label if I don't feel like it fits, you know? Simply on a stylistic kind of way. But also, I won't talk to a person at a certain label, certain labels, if I don't feel like I get along with them, you know? Example, like, the reason I, like, really liked working with Goldfat is because I got to know Johnny, Micus, and Grant, Mr. Porter, like, Music was still, like, on the conversation point because I was, like, sending them tunes and, like, we were putting together an EP and stuff. But chatting with them, and then years later, hanging out in Croydon and, like, eating, like, jerk chicken and, like, <laughs> walking around and just, like, seeing where they came up and, like, learning the history of, like, where they are from and stuff like that and things that don't even matter about music, just, like, the person. That's what I've connected with. And anybody who's getting into this culture is going to connect with people. And hopefully the people they meet welcome them with open arms instead of, hey, you need to conform to how we are. You know, that's just not, that's not going to keep things going. There's room for all of us here. But to know that we need to see someone that looks like us doing the thing we want to do and being successful. And not successful doesn't mean number one chart topping or whatever. It's just, are you having a good time? Do you feel like they're doing the thing? You know, I consider myself successful. I'm doing things I never thought I'd ever do. Travel to different countries based off like me just making some goofy ideas in this room and rooms passed and like streaming on the internet. Then like I'm at hospitality and meeting somebody who's like never really chatted or I didn't really know about. They're like, I've been watching you for years and like, you help me feel like I can be successful in this thing because I've watched you go from like mumbling on YouTube to playing main stage hospitality, you know? And if I can do it, you can do it. And that's what this whole like journey for me has been. So next time you have to think about like, why is this, like, why does all this stuff matter? Why is the... Why can't it just be about the music? Like, this is why, in as many words as I've used, you know, like, yeah. Like, I'm not the only person who feels this way. I'm, I imagine you have as well. Like, you listening, wherever you are, hope those dishes are done. Hope that that floor is vacuumed. Hope your laundry is put away. But I know you felt this way, okay? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, Oh, you like a black thing or a race thing or or an economic thing or a class thing. It's just like there's something about seeing someone you can relate to doing the thing you want to do and being successful at it. Like whether it's somebody in a similar range. If all you see is old people doing something, like you're not going to feel like you as a young person can can do it. Like I was like, oh, yeah, yo, you'll be fine. Like, yeah, 20s, you're fine. Even though everything you ever see is like 50 and up, you still feel weird, right? But let's say you find a couple of people who are around your age. You start to feel more confident. Hey, how did you guys break through? How did you do this? You know? Oh, it's like my experience. Like, oh, there's a black guy playing metal, playing punk. Oh, he's part of the bad brains. Oh, sick. Black people do that? I've been told my whole life to heaven, but like if you guys got through it, maybe I can. You know? That's why the guitar is off to the side. Like I saw someone do anything I wanted to do that looked like me, that came up like me, you know? So I felt more comfortable trying that thing. There's a lot of things I've tried. Like, how many kids like want to be basketball players because of Kobe or MJ or something like that? And don't have you feel like they don't have any other outlet, but like, hey, if they got through it, they went through what they did. Maybe I can too. It's that feeling of seeing somebody who looks like you doing the thing you want to do and being successful that gives you that idea, that small little inkling of if they can do it, I can do it.
that's why I'm here. Because I've seen people along my journey in skateboarding, orchestra, being a musician, drum and bass, house music, art, photography, whatever. Everything I'm into, I found someone who looks like me, who came up a certain way like me. Maybe it was a similar age. Maybe it didn't look like me at all. Maybe it was just like, oh, they're from St. Louis, so am I. They got out. Who wants to stay in St. Louis their whole life? I don't know. Who wants to stay at home their whole life? You know, that's the thing. Like, you connect on a human level, and that's what keeps things going. So when you see, like, things about Black History Month and, like, all the stuff of, oh, do your research. It's like, it's not a, it's not that obvious, you know. Un- go, if some, if you see someone in, like, why are they thinking this? Why are they doing this this way? You know, try and look at there. Like, ask them questions. Try to understand, you know. If it's an experience you haven't had, don't dismiss it. Try to understand why this person had that and what they do about it. Because not, like, it's about how things happen to you, but it's also, more so, more importantly, what you do after those. Like, how do you how do you get up from that? Like, when you send out a demo and you get rejected, do you just stop producing forever that first time? Or do you just, like, how do you recover? You just send a demo to another person. You get better, you know? But for people, be empathetic. Try and walk in another person's shoes, okay? Try and understand. Because if you understand, instead of leading with fear and trying to keep yourself in your bubble, you just feel better, you know? And you'll make a friend. And isn't it really about the friends we made along the way? I don't know. Or I guess in my experience, I do. And it is. Like, I owe where I am right now because of the people I've met. Not the tunes I've made, not the clangs, you know? People. People make the world go round. Anyway, I have more notes, but that's kind of a... (laughs) You want to end the episode there? Nah, that was it. I didn't even look at the script. That was exactly it, what I want to talk about. So, just think about that, okay? Challenge you to think about it. Yep. Seek to understand the people. Seek to make friends. Like, especially if you're a producer or someone trying to be like actively within the scene, like producer, DJ, label, something, you know. If you're even the listener, if you're just like, I just like going to raves and hearing music, like, it all matters because you are a part of why this thing goes around. Like, People are the reason this is around. And when people see someone that looks like them doing the thing they want to do and being successful at it, it makes them want to stay and be a part of the thing because they feel accepted for who they are, not for what they are, how they look, anything like that, but just for who they are, but where they came from, how they look, all these other characteristics inform who they are. You can't have one without the other. So just try to be a decent human being. Just one person's opinion. Anyway, so bit of a deep one, bit of a long one. Where are we at? Like an hour almost. But uh, yeah, see you in the next episode. This has been One's Notes. Representation matters. Don't forget that. If you want to talk about it, if you have an experience maybe I don't have, or like you want some advice as someone who's had quite a bit of experience in the short amount of time I've been doing this, you know, let me know. Comments, DMs, email, get a hold of me. We can always chat. Um, if you think I'm just like <laughs> shouting utter bollocks, <laughs> tell me why. Let's have a discussion on that. I don't need to change your mind, but I don't wish you'd understand. Anyway, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. I'll catch you in the next episode. I've been Winslow. This has been fun. Until next time. Later.